Players in the NFL can break the mold and become the exceptions to rules that every NFL team lives by. Drew Brees, Russell Wilson, and Kyler Murray and others have opened the door for quarterbacks six feet and under to have a shot in the league. And now Josh Allen has proven that if you have unbelievable amounts of raw talent and tools, you can actually make the translation and be a star in the league if you can put it all together. I don't think it's any mistake that just a few years later, the 49ers unload three first round draft picks to pick a guy in Trey Lance who has insane raw athleticism and arm talent that they are looking to tap into to create a Josh Allen caliber player. Josh Allen's athletic arc has been remarkable to watch. From being heavily overlooked coming out of high school to being an athletic 6'5", 245 pound monster in college, but he had a very rough start to his NFL career, but has now turned into who I think, and many others as well, the best quarterback in the NFL today. But can we look back to a single game or a single moment where Josh Allen went from being Steve Rogers and turned into Captain America? Well, I set out to find just that, and I believe we did. Josh Allen has proven to be the most successful project player. I'm going to show you when this project turned into a bona fide superstar in this league. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get into the video. Just looking at the numbers, we can see the dramatic jump from year one to year two, and then an even bigger jump from year two to year three. Not to say he regressed in year four because he just seems to keep on getting better and better. He did become a little bit more of a one-man show. He rushed for 763 yards, which was 342 more yards than he did in year three, and defenses started game planning religiously to make anyone but him beat them. But it wasn't always this way. But how did he go about it? How did he go on to make these drastic change in numbers? Well, he worked with quarterback coach Jordan Palmer, who introduced him to digital mapping his throws. He didn't vacation in the offseason. He came in and got to work, spending hours studying these digital mapping data points and creating a much more consistent throwing motion. And then he repped it for hours and hours until it became natural. He also gained unreal knowledge of defenses compared to what he came in into the league knowing and it shows on film but let me show you what I mean let's quickly look back at a rookie Josh Allen and see what his biggest flaws were so when we break down the game where I feel like it all clicked for him it'll make a lot more sense and coming into the draft the analysis was very clear he is super athletic with a great frame and a big arm but bad decision making, accuracy issues, and bad mechanics. So let's go back to week two of the 2018 season, his first career start against the Los Angeles Chargers. And in his first start, he had 245 yards passing, but on a horribly inefficient 18 of 33 with one touchdown and two interceptions. And it didn't take Bill's Mafia all but one quarter to realize that you can have all the arm talent in the world. If you have bad mechanics, you're going to be sailing the ball and it's not going to be going even close to where you want to put it. And now you're down 25 and it's a rookie mistake to feel like you have to force the issue and even though you get billed out and make a really good play on this, what you need to do is take your check down right now to your running back. This is what you look because you went out of plan after this just to be able to sit back there in the pocket. You cannot always rely on that. He's going to take the shot deep and get bailed out by the corner being in really bad position, but this was not the right play to make and this will cost you huge and this is what led to a lot of completion percentage issues and turnover issues with within his first two seasons. And again, just the mechanics, the accuracy issues, you drop this amazing play to hit your fullback and you're just inaccurate with it. He has to turn around, make a diving catch. You don't lead him up the field. And then you do get to the goal line. You have another great play and I don't understand what he didn't like about this. I mean, truthfully, you could hit either one of these guys. This corner's not gonna be able to turn around to hit it, get on this fullback. So either one of these, take off and run. He just does none of the options, gonna haphazardly goes about it and he gets gonna get wrapped up almost through an interception and just knowing what to do and not panicking when the pocket collapses his eyes go down instead of looking downfield or looking to hit his running back as a checkout and then he's going to compound his mistake by getting dragged down by throwing a key interception in this game when they're trying to make a comeback and what I loved about this play is he was able to stay calm and poised in the back of the end zone when you could be threatened by a safety. But again, the terrible mechanics leaves him this ball short and another crucial interception in the fourth quarter. 
Now after seeing that, now let's look to the game where he put it all together for the first time when everything seemed to click and he realized what it took to be an MVP like player. And it wasn't the game where he threw for the most yards or even the most touchdowns and it wasn't even a perfect game by any means. But the game we're going to be spotlighting is week 13 against the Dallas Cowboys in 2019. Let me tell you why. And I wanted to point to this game not because of the jaw-dropping numbers as he only had 231 yards passing, but he did it on an incredibly efficient 19 of 24 passing, which is 79% completion percentage with one touchdown, one rushing touchdown, and zero interceptions. When he realized that he can be a Ferrari with all the athletic tools in the world, but he can still go 30 miles an hour and make a lot of these checkdowns, boost the completion percentage, keep moving the chains, not put the ball in harm's way, make these tight window throws and when you need to unleash and make plays that only two other quarterbacks in the league can do you can do that with your improved throwing mechanics and he was able to make these checkdowns more consistently than in his rookie year because of improved mechanics now let's look at some plays where he wasn't just checking it down but where he was really able to let it loose and still efficiently with his mechanics and he would go on to absolutely dominate the rest of the game being in this very similar situation as he was in his first career start against los angeles he still had has the poise to stand back there but this time with improved mechanics is able to step up and even though your base isn't on point if you can have everything going in the same direction you can still make these tight window throws accurately down the field and then we even see how calm he is when his controller batteries die I mean this is just absolute confidence and you do this after taking check down getting your numbers up and he just looks so dominant from start to finish of this entire game and I think this is what really propelled them we'll always be able to look Look back to this game in week 13 that really got him on the right track of where he was mentally with how you play at winning football where he knows he can do everything and make all of the insane throws but you have to protect the football the football is the program and he this would carry his momentum into the start of the 2020 season where in the first four games he was throwing for 332 yards a game on 70.9 percent completion percentage he had 12 touchdowns to only one interception and an additional three rushing touchdowns sounds. And this week 13 matchup in 2019 really was the turning point of his entire career. Up until that point, the first 12 games, he had eight interceptions and the, including week 13 in the next six games he played that year, he only had one interception. And now for the next decade, I think Josh Allen is giving teams hope, maybe even some false hope that they can turn a guy who has all the tools and take them early in the draft in hopes to develop them. But it's just not that easy. There's a reason a lot of people or most people People that have a ton of talent haven't worked out in the NFL but what was different with Josh Allen well he put in the work every NFL player works hard but you have to go way above and beyond going to see Jordan Palmer looking at all this advanced technology not taking the offseason to go vacation but really trying to better your craft and he put in just his work mentally and gaining knowledge of the game and he was also drafted and put into a great situation which a lot of players aren't gonna have the luxury of having Trey Lance has this but he's already on a playoff team the year prior to him getting there they have a great coach a GM that got him digs and knows how to build a team and he is a freak of nature athlete with his frame his speed and being able to throw at 80 plus yards so his starting base going in with this his tools were off the charts but this is when I think we can really look back to that one moment where it all just clicked for him and we even saw now in this New England playoff game he can single-handedly take a game over and there's almost nothing you can do to stop him if he has everything rolling he's like Kevin Durant on a basketball court the defense is irrelevant you just have to hope he's having an off night because he is going to get his shot off no matter what and this is probably the worst timing making this reference with the Celtic series just ending but I regress and actually speaking of the New England game before we wrap things up let's cover to see how he's put it all together in year four in the NFL he showed on full display why he's the best quarterback in the NFL because he showed everything and he looked like the best player out on the field and he knew it as well. Just take your check down, feet don't need to be set if you have good mechanics. And then on third and short, the numbers in the box aren't gonna be there, but what they do have is a 6'5 monster in the backfield that's running like Derrick Henry. And then we get to see everything on this play. Being calm, poised in the pocket, escape, reset, go out. I mean, he just looks so confident. Like 
like he's the best player. He knows it. Not going to put the ball in harm's way, but an absolute dot in the back of the end zone. And then once again, full field progression, going through all his reads, all the way to right to left on this play. And then being another third and short situation, just being a tank. What are you supposed to do? The linebackers in a completely helpless spot right now. And then we get to see once we get in the round when the end zone, when the windows tighten, he has the arm strength and now he has the accuracy to fit almost every single ball in there. And then on a play like this, having the awareness when the pocket is good, it's easy to get not go to your check down because it seems like that's what you do when you're getting blitz, blitzed or pressured. But this is going to be the best read. They're going to find themselves that the corner is going to be one on one out there. So he's going to flip it out to him, even though the pocket was super super clean and make the best play. This is why he had 84%. He had more touchdowns than he did in completions. And this is when you're going to catch the defense on their heels. When you're just kind of going up and down nonstop, being able to protect the ball. And then you're going to be able to take your shots. And like we saw in his rookie year where this was an interception, these are all connecting now. And that's just a little bonus film session for you guys. But talking about Josh Allen is just way too much fun. But I want to know what you guys think. What game do you think it was for you? Because for me, it was that week 13 game in Dallas that really gave him his momentum going into the offseason to put up those ridiculous numbers in 2020 where he had a very efficient game and a very commanding win, completing 79% of his passes and having zero interceptions and only one interception in his last six games. But that's what I think. Make sure to comment down below what you think. Make sure to like this video if you like videos like these and subscribe if you enjoy daily sports content. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. And as always, I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.